Hi, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah. All about. My name's Eva Beverly. You can also see Poppy Pack, a senior designer from Canva. Hey, how are you going? Thanks so much for having me today, Yvette. It's great to have you. And we worked out just yesterday, didn't we, that you're a fellow Kiwi. So, guys, you've got to put up with two Kiwi accents for the next hour, but hopefully there'll be a lot of learning in between. We promise we won't go on about the lax too much, will we, Poppy? No. <laughs> cool. Poppy's also said uh, she's based in Sydney these days, originally from Auckland, but um, she doesn't usually get to do webinars in an Australian time zone, so she's really happy to be on. And there's been so many of you register, which is just amazing. I think we're up to 192 people still registering and jumping on. And I even saw just a minute ago we've got a guest from Mexico City. So hola, bienvenido. Español también. And I don't know where the rest of you are. Feel free to drop us a line and tell us where you're logging in from today, so we can uh, see just how international this webinar is. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to talk some stuff about Canva. So um, sharing my screen and I've got to find the right screen. <laughs> I had some pretty, pretty exciting that we've actually got people from Mexico because we've uh, launched in Spanish. So a big hola. <laughs> That's so, so cool. Um, I'm going to go entire screen and hopefully this gets the right window up. Bro, can you confirm when my screen is showing? Screen. Take a minute to look. It will depend on your internet connection. Okay, I think, loaded, so I think we can talk. So, um, gee, Poppy, did, did you create this? This <laughs> little, how did you do this lovely presentation? <laughs> yes, I did. I created it as a little bit of promo for us on Canva, which we're here to discuss today. I was a a little bit cheeky, I have to admit. Uh, I was needing a nice piece of imagery to throw out there and promote the event, and so I jokingly said to the Canva team, "Hey, I know a really great tool you could use." Um, so I don't know what they thought of my sense of humour. Um, for those of you who've never been on a webinar with us before, I'll do a super quick intro. So my name is Eva Adams, as I said before, originally from Wellington, New Zealand. These days, based on the Sunshine Coast, um, I spent my twenties travelling the world and using London as a base, and so I'm the founder of the Creative Collective. Of Officially bringing you this presentation today and we're really glad you could get on so we do these about once a month and we just love bringing people to you who know a lot of stuff about stuff that is helpful to you to build your digital skills build your businesses or maybe even you're just getting started out in business um, so today as I said we've got Poppy Pack and uh, she's a senior quick designer at Canva Poppy can you tell us a bit more about your role and how you got started with Canva yeah, absolutely. Um, I hope everybody can hear me loudly and clear. Um, so yeah, so as Yvette said, I'm the senior designer at Canva. As you already know, we're both Kiwis. Uh, I'm originally from Wellington as well. Uh, I see somebody else in the room is from Wellington, so that's cool. Um, I lived in Auckland and I moved to uh, Sydney three years ago. Shortly after that, I started working at Canva. So I'm pretty lucky to have been here pretty much since day dot. I think we'd only launched probably three months beforehand. Uh, we had a tiny little office and now we're sort of home to very, very many uh, designers and engineers. Now, um, tell us a little bit about that background of Canva. It started in 2012, is that right? And started it, how they started? It did start in 2012. We launched in 2013. So uh, the story starts with our CEO, Melanie Perkins, who is an absolute wonder God of uh, everything that is startup. She was teaching Photoshop at university and she was noticing that her students were pretty much coming out with the same product at the beginning of the semester as they were at the end. Uh, and she just sort of figured there must be an easier way to do this. And their Canva was sort of born. So her and her partner, Cliff Albrecht, uh, they're originally from Perth. So all of you Australians would be happy to know you've got your um, sort of back doors, um, backyard, uh, looking after this product. I think that's one of the really exciting things and I particularly wanted to showcase you guys is that it is an Australian product. Quite a few people are mentioned with a webinar with Canva. Did you know it's not right? actually didn't necessarily know because it has really global success, hasn't it? It has really global success. We've uh, been very lucky. Uh, we've definitely grown in mass amount. Uh, we're actually, we actually create three point 
our users are creating 3.8 designs every second now, which is just a huge number. And we couldn't have imagined that it would be like this three years ago. And how many people are actually using Canvas these days? Uh, we don't actually sort of celebrate the numbers so much anymore because we're really looking at what our active users are doing, but we're more really concentrating on uh, what designs are being created, how many images are being uploaded, and how the users are actually interacting with the tool themselves. It's not as much of a, a sort of like usership as maybe your other startups um, or your other sort of social media platforms. Yeah. Now, you also have a graphic design background. Um, how does sort of, how does Canva change your model? What the attraction for work there? Uh, so yeah, so my background is in publishing and branding. Uh, so I actually worked in New Zealand for years um, as a graphic designer uh, in lots of agencies. I moved to Sydney and I worked in um, studios as with branding. And when I was sent a Canvas link by one of my friends who has no real creative blood, uh, and she said, you know, everybody's going to be able to be a graphic designer with Canva. And I couldn't believe that there was finally this product that was going to give everyone the ability to stretch their creative wings. So it totally threw me and I just had to meet them. And I've been here since. So uh, pretty exciting. And it's amazing to be able to sort of empower everyone every day to be able to use that creativity with a tool that's so easy to use. Cool. Now, Brody, just I'm going to turn you off me. So I'm just going to do that. I think it might maybe what allow more room or thing like that. Brody, I'm not sure. It's the audio quality. The audio. Okay, we're keeping an eye on the audio. Hopefully that's improving. We'll return back to these slides. Um, I've just got a few basic ones um, just to get the conversation going, and then we're going to actually switch over to Canva, and Poppy's going to give us an orientation around the system. Who better to give it to us than a graphic designer or still a designer, but using now at Canva a whole lot and um, to someone who works at Canva themselves. So take us through the product, a bit of an overview. Like when people say to you, what's Canva? How do you explain it to them, Poppy? Uh, so Canva is essentially an online graphic design tool, which you obviously all know. Um, so it gives you the ability to be able to create anything from a social media graphic to a poster using a simple drag and drop process like you can see in the iPad screen right now. Um, you no longer need years of skills or, you know, education to be able to create simple graphics uh, very easily, whether or not it's for your business or whether it's for your kids' birthday invitations. It really is, I hope, I hope it really has hardly any limitations at the end of the day. Uh, so we're constantly working to make the product better um, and meeting our users' needs. That's awesome. So as an agency, the Creative Collective has started using it in a big way and I always joke that whoever a company I introduce to is pretty much gone for two weeks in the world of Canva um, and they literally do do that they start making their kids uh, birthday invitations and then saying hey you bet need me to whip something up um, because every format is there ready and easy for them to do and we love the fact that whilst we still use designers for certain things and have them in house um, we can now empower the whole organization the accounts girl can do can graphics or the intern can do Canva graphics without too much training at all. Has that been your experience too, um, Poppy? People just jump on and seem to be able to use it straight away? Yeah, it's one of those funny things. It's like, uh, even with my friends, you know, like I try to push them to, I've got a lot of friends that are in PR and it's such a wonderful tool to use for creating pictures or, you know, um, creating presentations and slides. And once you get them into it, they're obsessed. Like I get these text messages come through that make me so happy uh, when they start using or they use it for their CV. Um, it is it is really that amazing to just see somebody's creative journey take flight. And it really just decreases the production process too, doesn't it? Because if you, you are a or whatever, you'll go, I will create this work. WordPress was not perfect, and we used to have to go to the designers and they'd do something, send it back, it has a typo, back it goes, and that process would take a few days. But you can actually get in there, know what you want, and create it within minutes and can't you? Absolutely. Um, so when I do actually go through the product itself, um, I'll show you some of the key defining factors that make Canva so simple and so easy. But there is nothing greater than when we see tweets um, from people saying, I use Canva and I created my 
you know, a social media graphic in under four minutes. So thinking about the labor that that would have taken for somebody to get the copy, to get everything uh, to the designer and then get the checking on it and everything, you can now collaborate seamlessly as well by sending the link to whoever needs to approve it. Um, or even if they want to edit it themselves, it is just so functional, so easy. And it just makes every day a little bit easier when you're at work as well. Yeah, and who isn't too busy? They will mind some more hours in the day. So um, I, I'll show you just a couple more slides. I might even whiz over this one because the next one kind of goes into just a few of the formats. And I'm sure you'll show us more of these in a moment. But there's not too many common design formats that don't really have a template in Canva these days. Isn't that right? That is correct. Yeah. Uh, so we have an amazing design team whirling up different design types and beautiful layouts for everybody to use um, all the time. We're sort of trying to keep up with uh, the ever-changing and uh, sort of ever-accumulating amount of social media types that we need to have. You know, you've got your Facebook post, your Facebook cover, your Facebook ad. Um, so we're always listening to our users as well so if anybody has any suggestion or if there is anything that you want to use tweet it um we want to hear your thoughts uh, melanie loves seeing um, all the feedback so uh, if there is anything that maybe we've missed out on definitely let us know so what were some of the tweets i think we you mentioned those yesterday is the hashtag made with Kiva. was there another one that you like people to use yeah. Up on that well if you if you've made any designs in canva we want to see them it's very hard to actually keep track of it because you know there's no gps on the canva designs and there's nothing once you've exported it uh, for us to know whether or not you created it unless i can sort of point out the fonts that you've used which i'm pretty good at these days um so we want you to yeah hashtag it made in canva so we can see it and maybe even promote it on our social media sites if they look beautiful which i'm sure they do another one is our uh, canva love so that's one we just sort of constantly go back to um, just as a little bit of inspiration in terms of what we're doing and the product that we're creating and how we're solving a problem for everyone uh, it's amazing to see how much it's actually changed a lot of people's lives and been able to empower small businesses to take on their own work and to, uh, really create something out of it Absolutely. And um, just before we get into the orientation, I would say what I, I personally really love um, running a digital marketing agency with my amazing business partner, Katrina, who's in Newcastle, and our amazing team is particularly the digital marketing formats. Like historically, things like Facebook, especially the social networks, you'd get a designer to create a graphic and then they'd give it back. And overnight, Facebook had gone and changed the guidelines oh, I know. and found the guidelines that we thought were up to date. And then it turns out they were ones from last year six months ago so with muck around how do you guys keep it up to date do you literally just keep a finger on the pulse and quickly resize if the social work stated their dimensions yeah we resize it but obviously you've got to keep in mind things like you know the amount of people that have created an instagram post at the old document size so um i mean instagram for example sort of like doubled their uh document type double their dimensions. Uh, so what happens now is if you've created one at the old dimensions, uh, when you open it up, it'll be named old Instagram post uh, as a design type. So we just have to keep up with it really um, and just find a way to educate others into what they're doing. I mean, it's, it really is hard. You've tapped on something really important there because even as a designer, I always found it impossible to be able to keep up with them. And they're very obscure sizes. They're like, they're not just your easy sort of zero zeros at the end of the pixel dimensions. They're very intricate. Um, so it must be very hard for your social media manager who's got to create 15 different designs and 15 different uh, social media formats um, with the same content, which is why, you know, why we created the product in the first place. Well, I love you guys worry about whether Facebook's changed their cover dimensions and we're not so much anymore. We just log into Canva and go oh they're different now that's cool we just design it which is just awesome for us um we'll come back to those slides i'm going to exit now and um poppy i'm going to hand it over to you so if you would like to share your screen um cool. up everyone and we're going to take you on a wonder why a ride through the back end of canva well basically what you would see if you were a user of canva right um poppy yes absolutely so can you guys see my screen and can you hear me well just to make sure that this goes seamlessly. <laughs> Can indeed. So we've got four tiles at the moment. Um, you want to look at the bottom right 
white tile people. So hopefully that's you guys. So go for it, Poppy. Okay, cool. So um, I can't actually see the screen now. So you guys, please let me know um, via audio if there's anything that you want me to slow down with. Um, so Yvette, just keep an eye on that maybe. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so for those of you who have never seen Canva before, uh, this is our lovely Canva homepage. So this is where all the magic happens. For those of you who are wondering if you're already using Canva, why I have a different colored uh, banner at the top, it's because I'm in my Canva for work account. Uh, we can actually uh, choose which color you want for your brand and it will change it to this beautiful gradient accordingly. I actually change my brand colors all the time just to keep me on my toes. So um, we'll show you exactly how that works in a second. So first of all, we'll just run through some basics of Canva. Uh, so this is your homepage. Uh, these are all of my designs below here and up in the corner on the right you can see a plus button. So if I open up the plus, you can see it's giving me the option to choose any of our popular design types. So we've got everything, as I said, from your social media posts, your blogging and ebooks to marketing materials. Um, you know, we've already touched on this. So there are tons and tons of different options in here. Uh, so jump in and have some fun. Uh, today, I'm just going to jump in and create a social media post uh, and take you for a whirl through the editor. You can see there as well that once you hover over the design type, it tells you the dimensions underneath, just to give you a little bit more education around the product. So now we're in an editor. So this is where you can really start having some fun. Uh, so in terms of creating a design yourself, uh, you can actually start from scratch. But one of the key defining factors that makes Canva so magical is our Canva layouts. So you can see here to the left, we've got all these beautiful layouts. Uh, they're either, you can either get them for free and you can see we've got a free chip at the bottom on the right hand corner or they're $1 a piece and they've been created by our wonderful contributors. Uh, so all you need to do is just drop the design onto the page, as simple as that. You can see we've got a watermark in the background, so that's a paid image. Uh, if I add a new page down here, sorry, um, and I drop in one that doesn't have any paid imagery. Oh, the guitar is still, but you can see that you get rid of that watermark. So here you're actually able to just jump in, select the text box, and you can edit it as you like. You can change the color, um, you can see I've got my brand colors here um, or you can jump into our color wheel. So if you choose the plus, you can just move around the color wheel as easy as that. We've also got amazing fonts as you could see there. So you can jump in here and you can actually move around. So Yvette, do you use, the, um, do you use our Canva fonts or do you have fonts of your own? Yeah, we love your Canva font. I think they're really on brand and trendy and all the rest of it. But I am curious to ask, um, where do you get them from or how do you select them? Yeah, absolutely. So these are mainly, these are web safe fonts. So that makes mm -hmm. them easy to use within the editor. Um, and they're actually Google fonts. So a lot of you may actually be familiar with Google fonts already. Uh, so they're able, they're free um, and they're actually really beautiful. And we've got over, I think we've got nearly 200 now. We're adding new ones all the time. And we've just added a few new ones, which are really cool. Uh, so okay. definitely, sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. No, question, jump in. And I would love to know myself, if you do have your own company font, can you add mm -hmm. that? Absolutely. So once we go through Canva for work, which will be my next step, I'll just give you a show around the editor. Um, if you are just using the standard Canva format um, and not jumping into your premium account, uh, what you can actually do. But you can see how you can actually implement your brand into Canva for work. Uh, so this would be your design. Um, and that's just one of the Canva layouts. If you actually wanted to create something yourself, you can delete this page just as easy and I can jump into my elements. So here on the left-hand panel, you've actually got everything to create your own design yourself. Uh, so we've got free photos, uh, an amazing tool. As you probably know, you've used things like Unsplash or Pixels, uh, really amazing stock sites that actually give you the ability to be able to use free imagery. So we've got the same option here uh, for any of you that don't really have as much of a budget. Otherwise, you can search for any image you want. Um, 
Gorat and Sun. Um, you can search these images and we've got them for $1 a piece. Uh, so they're pretty easy to download and they're still completely and utterly affordable, uh, which is a really nice thing about Canva. So we've got over a million images and vectors for you to be able to use. And we've got some huge changes happening there soon as well. So be prepared for that. It's pretty exciting. So when I go back into my element section, you can see if I shut my photos folder, we've got grids, we've got frames, shapes, lines, illustrations, icons, charts, and a little bit of I love Canva swag if you actually wanted to drop some Canva logos onto your designs. So for the ones that are pretty easy to figure out, illustrations, we've got beautiful vectors, um, shapes, these are really great for you to actually create a text holder. Maybe you wanted to overlay some text onto a shape. Um, so you can just drop that in like that. And as we've seen, Canva is really easy to make edits in terms of your color. You can expand shape, move it around the page. And you can even get some good idea of where it's actually sitting to make sure it's centered. Other than shapes, we've got lines. One of the really amazing things about creating designs yourself, if you're game enough to actually do it, which I totally encourage, is jumping into your grids. Yvette, do your team create your designs yourself or do you use strictly templates? Uh, a bit of a mix. Yeah, so we'd like to use different things. Cool. So what I like about grids is you can just drop an image in and you can actually apply a filter. Uh, so I'm just going to drop one of my free photos into here. You can see here that all you need to do is click it, move it around the page, and it falls into the grid. And then you can see that you can also easily move the grid around if, say, you wanted to change the shape of it. And it's always best to it from that corner as well, isn't it, so you don't get yeah. all that and uh, distort and, and another point to make would be that I think it's amazing how many free images you have available inside the system so you don't have to go looking for them or you can if you want to use your own images um, but you know a lot of the stock image sites at the moment are you know not making images free or uh, even locking down if you're not an existing user so it's quite amazing that you have all of these already in here and it sounds like plans add more yeah, um, it's definitely a great tool. I think the nicest thing about Canva is you're able to just do everything inside the editor. You don't have to really find anything, any extensions or anything, which is, should be the way a product works. So you can sort of jump in here. You don't need to go into any photo editing tool. You can jump into our filters. Um, you can open up the advanced options. You can drop in a filter. We've got some beautiful filters in here, and you can adjust them if you're feeling a little bit more photo savvy as well. So the next thing you can do is drop in some text. So that's the next option on our left-hand side. So here we've got, you know, you've got your heading, your subheading, and your body copy. So that will be default unless you've set it in your Canva for Work account. So edit your text. This is my sunrise shot. And I can actually change the color. Now I can see people actually asking the questions about tiny little tricks, like some ninja tricks um, for Canva. So we have an amazing selection of shortcuts. I believe shortcuts are the way forward and you should always design with them. So if you want to use one of the shortcuts, so we've got uppercase in your drop down. Another thing you can do is actually just hit Command Shift K and that will actually give you your uppercase. I will actually send through for a vet to send a follow-up email, um, a link to all of our shortcuts, which just makes it so much easier for you to design. So once I've done that, I can actually jump in here. If you want to apply text spacing, I'm not sure how savvy you want to be with your design skills, but we've actually got really beautiful features like letter spacing so that you can sort of give a little bit of nuance to your image. So one of the other reasons that the grid is so great is because you can crop the image within the grid. So I can make sure that that jumper, jumping guy from the mountain isn't in the way of my text. 
And there you go. So you can just download as easily as that as well. You can download a JPEG, a PNG, a PDF for print, or a standard PDF. So JPEGs and PNGs are great to use for web if you've got if you're uploading it for your social media or anything. Uh, PDFs are obviously better for print-based projects. You can also uh, choose which pages you actually want to download if maybe you've got a multi-page document. So that's sort of a bit of a circuit around the standard Canva account. We have backgrounds, uh, which are very much just what you imagine. So you can drop in your background into your graphic. Um, but now we're just going to jump back. I'm just going to jump back to the home page and we're going to show you Canva works. I think you're all pretty excited about that. So once you've actually become a member of a Canva for Work team, you've probably been invited by either, you know, your manager or your director. Uh, so you'll actually see that you've got a Your Brand section on your left-hand panel. So this is where you find everything is this gray left-hand panel. So if I hit on my brand, you can see it's actually opening up all of my templates. So this is my brand that I've named Object Product. I can actually change it. Sorry, I should spell my own name right. I can change it as easy as that as well. So just stay back in here at templates for a second. So when you actually start your account, we give you sort of um, a starter for your brand journey. So we give you these templates. These templates are all default templates, but they give you a really nice idea of maybe if you want to have a play around with colors before you set your brand kit itself. Uh, it's a really nice way for you to get started. Have you had a play with these at all, Yvette? Yeah, I have had a play. They're really cool. I love Canva for work. It's definitely worth every dollar. And, um, up, you know, and I'm not saying it for sales, because I genuinely believe <laughs> upgrading to it gives you so, it saves you hours. So for this yeah. fee, it's worth it. Cool. Um, so the next great thing, I'll show you how to create a template, but is your brand kit. So I'm going to jump in here. You can see that we've actually got our colors, you've got fonts, and you've got logos. So this is where you can save everything that is essentially your brand. So you might at the moment have a print brand kit uh, that you sort of plug around. So this is great because it means it's all online in the cloud save for you to access anytime for anyone within your team. Uh, they're not all able to edit it. We will go into the team members after this um, and I'll show you how you can set permissions. But basically you can add as many colors as you like. From a design perspective, I would say don't. Um, try to limit your colors to two to four colors for your design, for your palette. Um, and you know, really think about quality over quantity. So you can add your color, not a good color to add, by the way. Um, <laughs> We'll go with Dodger Blue for now, which is still a pretty bad color, but she'll be okay. Um, and then you can actually remove it just as easily. Now, you might actually have a brand color, a hex code that you just want to punch into here. So you can actually do that yourself. You can see that you create a hex code as you move your uh, cursor around the color wheel. So I'm just going to remove that color. Uh, you can see that this aquamarine, aquamarine color is what has been what has created my beautiful banner. So the next thing we've got is your fonts. So as we were saying before, you can actually upload your own font, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I was pushing for it for so long and it was probably one of the most exciting days of my working life at Canva, the day that we could upload your own fonts. Uh, because I know a lot of you already have a style guide implemented and you maybe have a font that you use in whatever traditional program that you've been using in the past. So the ability to be able to upload that definitely is a game changer for you. Uh, so you can actually jump in here. You can see that this is my brand font at the very top here. Otherwise, you can choose any of the Canva fonts um, just as easily. So I can choose Bebas Nui, which is one of my favorite fonts. Um, as my header, my subheader, and my body copy. You want to make sure that there's actually, as a design tip, um, a decent amount of hierarchy or nuance between uh, all the different sizes. So have a play around with it. Your job as a designer is never done. So really enjoy uh, the process of creating your brand kit. It's a really great way to start, and it's the best place to start on your brand journey. You've also got your logos. So you can upload an SVG for those a little bit more design savvy. Uh, so SVG will mean it's color changeable, much like our elements in Canva. Otherwise, you can upload anything you like, uh, a JPEG or a PNG. A uh, PNG will mean it's a transparent background. So if you're having problems with a white background, it's generally because of that. 
So if you're actually not feeling so confident about this, we have um, a really great font combinations and a color inspiration post that you can go to to get some uh, sort of to inspire you a little bit more to create your own brand kit. The next thing we've got is your team members. Just so, before we get on to that, um, Poppy, yeah, there's just sure. questions coming in bringing um, CMYK. Um, can you add CMYK or should you just be looking at CMYK to hex uh, calculators online and then translating that? Because I mean, this with that hex suggests this is more for the online environment. Absolutely. I mean, I would look at your Pantone to um, your Pantone to hex is probably going to be a little bit more reliable. Um, or your RGB to hex, not your CMYK to hex, but that's totally dependent. I'm not sure what the what you're using the color for. Um, a lot of people, are, you know, created they could be creating color pencils. I'm not sure. So um, yeah, definitely have a look at whatever the specific uh, product that you're creating is um, best suited to. So if you do a little calculator, Leah's yeah. saying, will it export? CMYK or only um, hex? Oh, right. Okay. So, no, you can only, you will only, it will export, if it's a PDF, it'll export to CMYK because it's print. Um, so, that's a little bit more of a, is that what you meant? I think so. Yeah, you're saying she's, you know, getting all this up and I guess getting the closest match in the hex range. Yeah. Um, once she wants to export a design, if she exports the, for print, saying as a PDF, that will be CMYK. Um, yes, the print will be CMYK. Whether it matches it exactly, um, I can't. I can't promise that or say um, on behalf of not seeing the actual design itself. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, if you do have any questions, we have the most phenomenal support team, and they are there to answer your questions twenty four seven. And they know a lot about the print process when it comes to this. So. Uh, and in terms of export, I don't, I don't really work over export, so, um, so it's not really a question that I can, I can honestly answer and say that you will have that exact experience with. <laughs> yeah, sure, no problem. Cool. Are there any other questions on the brand kit whilst we're still here? Um, I think the two questions I asked summarised most of the two, and we'll go right back through your questions at the end, and I'll pull out, I mean, please appreciate there's a lot of you and a lot of questions coming through. So if they're coming up and they're highly relevant to what Poppy's talking about, and I think it's really worth covering that off, I'll um, mention it to Poppy, but otherwise we'll uh, allow us some question time at the end and try and get the rest of them uh, covered off. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, so we'll just jump into team members. So this is a just really easy section. So if you want to add somebody to your team, you just punch in their email address and you can actually create the, make them a member, a template designer or an administrator as easy as that. So an administrator is somebody who has overall power of your team, um, has overall control of your brand kit. So should have a very sound idea of how your brand should look and feel um, in terms of how you visually communicate with your audience. Your template designers, uh, they can actually create templates, um, but they do have uh, they do have limited access to a few things as well. Um, then we've got members. So members can only create designs from the templates that have been created. Really perfect for somebody who maybe works in social media um, or needs to really create a lot of social media graphics on the fly based on your templates that you already have designed. Mm -hmm. So once you've actually sent your invitations, you'll see your team members under here. You can actually promote, demote, or remove just as easily. So that, that section is really simple um, and really easy. As you can see here, um, that each member, each additional team member will cost uh, $9.95 per month, um, or it's $12.95 uh, US dollars uh, per month paid, paid monthly. The last section we've got is billing, which is very boring. So we'll jump over that one. <laughs> so, so we're back to copy on the users. Yeah. Like how many could you potentially have in that system if you had a really large company of all sorts of people wanting to design? Yeah, well, we're, um, we've got uh, Yelp. We've got uh, TechCrunch. We've got so many huge companies. We've got Huffington Post, Lonely Planet. They've been using Canva and Canva for work for a very long time. They were some of our, um, you know, some of our beta users. So um, we, you know, you can have up to, we've got some 
teams of 200 people, which is pretty exciting. So, um, and hopefully, you know, it will turn into sort of sub teams and there will be huge changes that will actually happen within this uh, model, but it's just waiting to see how many people we're gonna need uh, to fit that for. Um, a lot of our Canva for Work users though, I think it's been really useful for people that have a small business because it's empowering them to be able to sort of uh, work beyond their means in terms of what they're creating. They weren't sure about how to do that. And before, you know, a couple of years ago, there wasn't the ability to be able to do your own accounts and create your own designs and publish your own social media. You know, it was such a hard world to be in. And now the choices are just so amazing and the options out there to be able to empower your own business. Yeah, cool. Um, so did, was there other stuff you wanted to show us, Poppy? Yeah, or so... So I'm just going to jump in and I'm going to create a design and just show you two really amazing features that come with Canva for Work. Mm -hmm. So if I want to create a design, I just go straight back into where I was with my social media. I'm going to choose one of our layouts for this one. I might choose Spring Flowers and Bloom. Um, so once you're actually in a Canva for Work team, you can actually jump into your file section. And once you're in file, you can see that this is your social media. You can see it's 800 by 800 pixels. And if I want to change the dimensions, as we were talking about earlier, it's, you know, having to create the same content uh, for so many different document types. So I can just jump in here. As I hover over, you can see what the different document sizes are as well. And I can instantly change this to a Facebook post um, with no drama. So it takes all the pain out of that. The next thing we've got is just like stepping it up a notch completely. You can jump into your file uh, and you can actually magic resize. So magic resize gives you the ability to be able to choose as many document types as you like. And if I hit abracadabra after hitting, I've got a tick on Pinterest, social media and Twitter. It's going to open up three different tabs and it's going to remix that design for me into those three different document types so I can just download it as easy as that. So it's no more copying and pasting. Um, it's all just done for you that easily. I think it's so actually my favorite of all copy. Like once yes. I signed up for work and could start <laughs> doing that, it will completely change. Because same thing, we create a graphic and then go, oh, that's proved the client likes to look and feel. Now can you please roll out one RAM and one for this and one for that. And I just love how amazing you can just tick all that and it creates them. And sure, they're not always 100% perfect, but the smallest tweaks and you have got your plural to do a pretty comprehensive, I love, love for me, digital marketing campaign. And, you know, activating the consistent professional graphic across medium. So, and just for the businesses out there that are still, still finding a feat with digital marketing campaigns, you it's a great idea to prepare, pre prepare all your posts, do your Facebook cover um, cause, or any of your other social covers because that's great state. You know, change some stuff up for your site, your e marketing head up. There's lots of places you can insert some graphics for even campaigns, whether you're starting to do a campaign coming soon or it's a special promotion related to a product launch or whatever it is you do. It's, it's a game changer, that feature. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I absolutely love it as well. It's very cool, very quick, and just takes a lot of pain out of what you have to do day to day. Um, the other really cool thing about Canva for Work is um, our folders. So you can actually upload all of your beautiful images or bring in your photos from Facebook. A uh, really great place for you to store stuff. Uh, you can add new folders. You can add as many as you like. You can see I have quite a few. Um, and you can actually just upload images as easy as that, um, it takes no time at all for you to actually have all of your images stored somewhere where everyone can access if they like. Um, you can access them by actually clicking the plus here on the side. You can choose whether or not you want it to be just you or whether you want your whole team to be actually sharing the folder. Uh, so that's really good if somebody else is creating a graphic that they need imagery for and you've got the image. Uh, so yeah, it takes a lot of hassle out of everything. So that's sort of like a really good rundown of how Canva for Work sort of works. Um, were you, did you have any questions regarding that, Yvette? Um, there's been a few questions just coming through on price. So we'll click them the link of how much does Canva for Work cost and let them know the monthly billing charge of 95 US. Um, mm -hmm. 
obviously changes depending on the you know fluctuations in rate and there's an annual payment of 110 per member um there was someone a few back who said there was a comment on it doesn't support safari so can we get clarification on exactly what browsers um canva will work on and which ones don't um, it 100% works on Safari. Um, it works on Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. Okay. And um, the other comment was with the command functions, do you have, because that was obviously a Mac command function. Um, we have, see we, yes, yes. So I will, I will show you the help article that we have with all of that. And um, there will be a very cool UI adjustment that will make that a lot easier coming very soon. So stay tuned. Awesome. Okay. No, I think that's all the main questions. There might be a few more further back, but we're keeping up pretty well. Um, actually, Stephen has asked. I know the answer, but I'll let you answer it, Poppy. Does the person mm -hmm. give the ability to resize for different social media platforms? No. So Cam, it's a Cam for work specific uh, feature, unfortunately. I'm sorry. <laughs> you could go through Stephen and create each of those individually but you're going to take a bit of time doing it so yeah again like way up time versus money how long will that take you and if you pay that feature per month you know would you save mm -hmm. that time i'd suggest you um, would sorry i just realized that i missed out a really huge feature and i apologize immensely i got so caught up in the magic resize but i forgot to actually <laughs> show you how to turn this into a template <laughs> so if you show if you see in the corner here, um, then we've got a show team option. So if I hover over show team, uh, I can either make it, make it so that I can show the team my design so it'll come up in their team stream. I can make the design public and I can publish it as a template. So if I save my changes here, hopefully that will work. Um, I'll just go back to my brand page um, and I'll show you how this works. So if I go back into my templates, you can actually see that now they've separated themselves out into presentation, Facebook post, Twitter post, and Pinterest graphic. And you'll see that that was where our lovely graphic was. So now you can actually, or anyone in your team can jump into that and edit it to make it their own. So they won't actually edit the design itself. They'll make a remix version of it and it'll save down into their designs page so sort of think of it as your desktop is your designs page and your templates page is more like your server. So it's what you're sharing with the rest of your team. And that is another really great thing of Canva that all of this can live online and that you can organize your folders and so on. Um, and I love jumping in to go, okay, I'm working on this client or our brand, jump into that folder and kind of pick up where you left off rather than searching your hard drive or Dropbox for the endless graphics folders that you've created somewhere else at some time. Um, Poppy, I also think it could be worth explaining because I don't think we covered it and I think it is pretty important. There has been a comment from someone where they've mm -hmm. over they had created the whole saving thing and the best practice for naming whatever it is you have created before you download mm -hmm. it. Uh, yes, yeah, so as as always, uh, best practice is to name everything properly. Um, I've actually got myself into a bit of a funky situation because I was so used to being on a server as a designer um, and then I sort of got into my Canva account and it's all mine for so long and now I'm sharing things with people. So you definitely, best practice is always to name your uh, designs. So you can name it uh, and edit it just here. So, you know, spring, flowers. Um, so just as easy as that. You can obviously always rename it when you've downloaded it, just as you would anything on your desktop. Uh, so in terms of over, overriding things, you'll see on my brand page, um, if I go into my designs, that design that I've just created, they may not have thumbnailed yet. So this one's the only thumbnail. You need to make sure if you haven't actually got a thumbnail on your designs page, it's because you haven't closed the design yet. So there are lots of these little intricacies that come with the product because it is an online product. It's not on your desktop. Um, so, you know, definitely use our support articles um, if you have any questions around it. But everything should be fine, <laughs> even when it's got a gray space on your page. So you can see here we've got a little uh, double sort of person icon in the corner. So that actually tells me that this design has been shared with my team. So most likely it's become a template. So if I want to edit this design, um, 
I actually, or, you know, I can edit it by just clicking on it myself, or I can actually make a copy, move to trash, it will move to trash. Uh, in terms of saving, we do, it's, it's online, so it's an auto save. However, if you do get um, an alarm, so say if I try to do this very quickly, and then if I try to reload that one, can you see the reload sign? No. Uh, can I see the reload sign? Which no, corner? It probably it may not have come up because it's an alert. So what I was going to show you is that Canva will always tell you if the design hasn't saved before you actually shut the design itself. So you can see here we've got unsaved changes. If you hit file, it will always trigger for your design to save. Otherwise, hit save, and you'll see that all saves, all changes are saved at the top. So in terms of changing the name, though, at the moment, this particular one is in the top right. It's called Facebook Post, right? And you can mm -hmm. click there and give that design yeah. title. Do you have any naming conventions or suggestions on best practice? Oh. To save? Um, Oh, it really depends. It really depends. If you're looking for, you know, your traditional designer style, it's very abstract and it didn't make a lot of sense, to be honest. We used to have, you know, underscores and all that sort of stuff because of the way that you'd save on your desktop. But now you can make things a lot uh, more explicit. I mean, I would just, um, I would, I would just say exactly what it is. This is my spring flowers, and maybe and name what it is. Facebook post and you know potentially the date if you're going to be creating more versions of it so you might want to put you know 22nd of April um, and you know just make it make sure that everybody knows what it is um, it's easier for you to actually be able to use if you um, are in your camp for work account you also have folders so they don't actually folder on your designs page, but if I add a new folder here, so say it's April, I can actually drag these designs into the folders. So they don't move from this page, but it is a really good resource. So if you wanted to go in there, um, it just is an easier way to be able to find some of your designs. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, one other feature I don't think you showed us, I may have missed it, was um, duplication because that can be handy when you are banging out lots of similar graphics, can't it? Um, yeah, so you can make a copy of this design. Um, so if you jump into your folder, uh, into your file and make a copy, you can actually make a copy from within the design itself. Um, and you can see that's remixing. That will create a new one on my page. So if I... If you can't see it on your home page, it won't automatically apply. You'll need to refresh your page uh, to be able to find your design. So if ever you've lost it, you'll find it that way. Um, so you can do that. Another option you can do is actually just, if you hover over the right-hand corner, uh, you can actually make a copy of the design itself. And you can see here, of, yeah? The one I was actually indicating was even on the page, if you're doing a suite of graphics, you can hit the little duplicate button too, can't you? A on the right hand. Yeah, once you're in the, that's the little thing I use, it might be ha handy to others. Uh, if you go into the design. Um, oh, the design. oh, sorry, did you mean the elements? No, the actual on the right, underneath the number one, how you can go, yep, do another one just like that. Oh, uh, okay, you mean, oh, did you duplicate a page? Sorry. sorry. Yeah. sorry. No, just, what you yeah, <laughs> Lingo. So yeah, so you can actually just duplicate the page here if you're creating a multi-page document and you want to just change, you know, edit the copy or keep the design the same. Um, you can easily just duplicate these pages as much as you like. You can have thirty page, up to thirty pages within the design. Goodness, I thought that you were telling me something that I didn't know about Canva, and I was almost going to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. But, uh, no. I think so. Um, but yeah, yeah cool. I so that's a very good point. You're banging out heaps of social graphics and they do need to look like brothers and sisters. Maybe it's a countdown up to an event. You know, you can use the same trick which is associated with that event and you can just change the words on it like 20 days to go, 10 days to go, last chance. And then I just down remember, yeah. tweet of graphics and send them on to whoever's going to schedule them in our social media system. So that's a trick I use. Just remember to, um, just remember where they are. Is mm -hmm. one is one thing that I'd say. I, I, you know, at the beginning of the Canva days, I used to create a whole lot of graphics in one document, and 
I would spend so long finding them because I couldn't see them from the home page. Uh, so yeah, so if you are going to duplicate and just make sure that you've named the uh, the file so that way you can find it easily. Sure. So um, Poppy, there is more questions coming through. Do you want me to run those by now or is there any other sure. features to take us through at this point in time? Look, honestly, the product is just becoming bigger and bigger and there are there are so many features and I could probably sit here for five hours happily. <laughs> in fact, in my happy place and show you all these things that you could do. Um, in terms of actual features that come with Canva for work, this is one that I quite like. Um, doesn't always, so you have, just as I was showing you um, with the home page that, you know, the thumbnails haven't updated. If I close these windows, maybe it'll work for me. So I'll see, this is just a really nice way for you to be able to drag in styles that you've created already in your account. So I'm just gonna reload this page quickly. Um, so you can either jump into your layouts or you can go into your designs. So this, they have it all updated, but you can actually, if I add a new page onto this document, I can actually drag in a design that I've already created and it could be, you know, a presentation. This one, for example, was a presentation. It wasn't a Facebook post at all. And I can just drop it in and I can edit it as I like. I think that's a really cool tool because if say you've got a whole load of different presentation slides that you usually use, you can actually just drag them in from the side. which is just a really nice, and you just have to make tiny minor adjustments, if any at all. Uh, so that's a really cool tool, um, if you're feeling confident enough to do that. Um, in terms of sharing your design, so if you wanna send your link to somebody that you work with, if you wanna you know, do a little bit more collaboration, if you hit share at the top, you can easily just send this link as well. This link is an edit link, um, or you can shoot an email to them um, and, you know, you can say, you know, say what, you know, what's up. This is my, email. this is the design, and they can edit it. If you hit the edit, uh, make it an editable design, then they can maybe say, you know, oh no, it's autumn. So as easy as that, pretty cool. Um, but I think that's probably it in terms of. Um, I think that will give you a really good chunk of how the product itself actually works. Um, if you have any questions of it or anything that you like using that you want me to work, run through. No, I think you've given us a comprehensive orientation. I have had a query from someone saying that, um, do you run webinars for basic first time users? But um, would I be right in thinking that this is kind of it, like with the recording in hand and maybe looking up some of your resources, they should be good to go. Yeah, um, so if you go to our, if you go to our um, YouTube page, uh, I've got a lot of my, I did do the Cam for Work uh, sort of beginners webinar when we first launched um, probably about six months ago so there are lots of videos there that you can see how to cool, use cool features and things like that we also have an amazing blog called the design school I'm not sure if you've used it a bit um, yeah I just posted that in the thread and Brody's just posted the YouTube so we're following your tail with lots of resources yeah. so I hope fantastic I didn't yeah, know that. So the design school the design yeah. school is phenomenal it is absolutely amazing and it is the most amazing tool to use alongside Canva because Canva gives you the product and then that gives you the teaching behind things. And it'll just give you some really cool ideas and how, I know how it's not easy to just be able to create a beautifully designed graphic. So it just gives you a little bit um, of understanding around how to do it and why you do it. Uh, so definitely jump into the design school and, you know, play around with your typography skills or have a look at your backgrounds. Um, there's also a really great font pairing post, not to blow my own trumpet, but I wrote a really good font pairing post that has all the fonts from within Canva so you can apply them to your brand kit. That's awesome. Fantastic. All right. Well, with just a few minutes to go um, and I personally have to get away um, with some other commitments later and I'm sure Poppy's very busy and we're really lucky to have had her today. I'm just going to go back and canvas if there were other questions um, that haven't been answered. Um, 
So I'll start off with people who submitted questions um, and had votes. This is a cool feature of this platform. You can, if you get on webinars with us again in the future, um, submit us the question prior to the session and then people can vote it up and say that's something I really want to know as well. So the one that got most voted was Melinda Martin. Thank you, Melinda. And what she said is, I use Canva for business, Facebook ads and posts and would like to earn, learn, I think she means, how to maximize the impact effectively. Um, any top tips on business Facebook Book ads and how to make a crash hot design copy? Uh, well, Facebook have got so many funny rules and regulations around what they can actually. Um, am I breaking up? I can sort of feel myself echoing a bit. Um, no, you're good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they have definitely a lot of rules and regulations. Images are seriously the best thing that you can use in designs. Um, so if you want to have a look at the design school on any articles on how to maximize the benefit of images, uh, Facebook love them as well. And Facebook also have limitations on text. So you can say a lot um, by saying not a lot at all. Awesome. Um, next question, and this was from KE. She actually asked a couple. She said, mastering the search functionality within Canva. It seems like Canva offers so many free resources to use in designs, but I feel like I can never find what I want. So I guess she's looking for tips on search terms to get to the stuff she wants quicker. Yeah, cool. Okay, so um, there are definitely like little things that you can sort of benefit from with this. So if I search for grass and sunlight here, um, in terms of the actual tools themselves, if you're looking for a, a specific image, if you hover over the left-hand corner of the image, you'll see a little icon that's the information panel, and it'll open up all the information about this graphic itself. And then you can have a look at the keywords. Now, the keywords don't highlight, so it doesn't give you a great idea of how you can do it. But if I wanted to hit, if close up was what I liked about that, or maybe it was green, I can actually hit on green, and it'll give me a more thorough search on green images. Um, in terms of uh, finding other elements, is definitely in your element section. So if you open up your illustrations, um, we've got beautiful illustrations, vector graphics that have been created by our design team as well as contributors. Uh, so this one is one that people really struggle to find. So you can uh, use charts as well if you're creating infographics, which are obviously very trendy right now. Uh, you can jump in here and you can use any of these. Uh, the text is editable as well. Um, also using shapes, like I said, um, in terms of the design resources, you can actually jump in here and you can use, you know, like the shape like I have and well, like the designer had in Autumn Flowers and Bloom. They've got rectangles sitting behind it to give that nice offset against the image. Uh, so using any of these shapes, they might just look plain for now, but, you know, start using them and have a play around. Um, it's usually just maybe a little bit of education around how you can actually benefit from these. And the design school itself is working on a far more practical approach where you're actually able to edit the designs that they include within their posts. So jump in there and have a play around there and you should be able to find some uh, some good resources. Cool. Um, now there was a bit of a curly question earlier on. I didn't know how to answer it and I did sort of allude to they may well be in Canva's terms and conditions. Somebody said if they upload their own copyrighted image, what then happens with the copyright of that image? It doesn't become free for all with other users, does it? And does Canva assume the copyright or anything like that? Your uploads are your uploads. Um, it doesn't matter at all. Um, it's it's not anybody else's. Nobody else can see the graphics that you uh, place in your uploads personally. So, um, and you know, you never own the image, you own the license to the image. So that's yours until you've, whatever you've purchased it for, um, which is why we created these folders so that people are able to actually upload their images um, and save them within their folders for their teams to be able to use. Okay. Um, Jacqueline uh, Lim has asked, do you have a crop option for personal accounts or is that just a Canva for work feature? Do you have, sorry, what was that? Reform crop option. I'm not quite sure what she means. Oh, sorry. But download. Um, is that crop, crop and bleed? Doesn't say yet. Maybe, um, Jacqueline, you could clarify that a little more and we can answer that. Um, I'm if, it was for the, 
if it was for the grid, um, yeah, that's that's a standard Canva feature. Um, so you've got that to use and have a play with. Mm. This is a good question. I think I know the answer, but I'm curious to hear yours, Poppy. Fiona says, if you're a freelancer creating graphics for multiple clients, would you recommend a separate Canva for business account for each client, or would you get a Canva for business account and then have folders per client? Um, I mean, it depends on what volume that you're creating the graphics at. Uh, I would probably, I would probably tend to create uh, different accounts for your different brands. So, uh, but again, you know, like you'd have to be creating a really high volume to need to separate them out and want to pay for the uh, multiple accounts as well. So you might find it easier to just, it depends on your organization skills as well. If you're able to uh, folder that appropriately, then um, absolutely jump on in. Um, it's definitely a personal decision, that one, I think. Mm. I guess it depends on, yeah, is there any chance you're on from that client and need to hand that over or and how big a job would that be to download it all and all that kind of stuff as well if it lives online. Yeah, um, yeah it depends on budgets too, whether people are prepared to pay for those too, I imagine. Mm. Um, here's another question, a bit of a curly one from Leah. Why is the cost for Canva for Work in USD when it's an Australian business? Um, so a majority of our actual um, our users are in the States. It's as easy as that. Um, we do a lot of work in San Francisco uh, and that's just actually how a lot of, uh, a lot of companies, um, startups actually uh, sort of monetize as well with, in terms of how they pay um, depending, yeah, I mean, it all comes down to where a majority of our users are. So um, it didn't, Australia took a little bit longer to adapt to Canva uh, than, than America did. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're all catching up now. We're missing out, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, Jacqueline did provide further clarification. I think you did answer it, but she said she wanted to know about a product picture cropping the sides, e.g. she wants to put two pics on top of each other so she'll need a freeform crop tool to crop the picture nicely. So far, I could only crop square. So I, which means freeform like Photoshop has, maybe. Yeah, but you can do that in this. You can like this. How, yeah? Yes, so maybe if she's trying to freeform crop an element, like say flowers, then that's not going to be achievable. That would be Oh, not freeform. Okay, so you mean a deep, deep etched uh, graphic. So you can import them. Um, you can't actually deep etch on Canva, uh, but you can upload your own uh, clear cut, uh, you know, cut out images. We've also got cut out images in our library that you can use uh, with transparent backgrounds. Okay, I hope that answers your question, Jacqueline. Let us know if it haven't, hasn't, but we've done our best to answer that. You know what, it's 1.30. I think we've answered all the questions that came in pre, and I've had a good scroll through the very long list of uh, comments and where they're from and thank yous and lots of positive stuff. Um, yeah, I think we've actually covered it off. So I've done pretty well. Virtual high five to you, Poppy, for <laughs> a great session. Um, have you got any parting words other than you'll be supporting some resources which we'll in turn hand on to everyone, which would be fantastic? Um, look, honestly, jump in, play around, enjoy it. Don't be scared. Um, you know, like a lot of people have a theory that design is pretentious and we're trying to take that away from it um, because it's actually really fun and create memes and create invitations and do stuff for your work. Uh, it really can do everything um, and it's only going to do more and more and more. So, um, yeah, hold tight. We've got some pretty cool news coming up soon as well in terms of how you can use our product. So, um, I hope you'll all look forward to that. And it's been a real pleasure to be able to uh, share some pearls of wisdom today. Cool. Um, just as a wrap up, and thank you so much um, for your time, Holly. Sorry, Holly. <laughs> Got it right all the time. Why did they say that at the end? I have no idea. <laughs> just switching over to our sites and just, just giving you guys some options if you want to help with the stuff. Uh, I'll take a minute. It might be late. Let me know when it switches to my screen. Did I pick the right one? Not coming up. Mm -mm -mm. Might have to kill that one. And uh, now we're 
see, can you see my screen now? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's delayed. Okay, guys, just a couple of options for you. Um, look, Canva's got design school and um, lots of resources. Um, there's other things, though. Obviously, getting great graphics is one thing, but articulating them into your digital media is another. We actually have lots of great online modules um, that you can jump and do. So if you created some great email graphics and want to know how to set up your MailChimp and get email marketing or you are not that confident on the media, jump on to our sister company, another company I created, the trainingcollective.com.au slash unmodules, and you can work through those at your own uh, discretion. And we have lots of this sort of thing on our webinar recordings where I interview people, where I pull in experts, or I sometimes run them and talk about these topics that I hope will really help you uh, go through your business. And if you want to do multiple uh, modules, them and really skills, and there's an Accelerate program as well, which um, does include some stuff about uh, creating uh, graphics for the digital environment, and we do give Canva a big wrap there as well. Um, some of you who actually got on today, I know, have done those programs, so hello, nice to be training with you again. And, um, I, yeah, I think you guys will learn a whole lot, and that's why you keep sticking with us, coming back for more, which is awesome. If more of a in person, not just online. We actually have a lot of great stuff coming up very soon. Uh, we've got WordPress training on the Sunshine Coast. I'm speaking at a couple of breakfasts about Facebook ads. We've got a social media workshop in Sydney. Um, we're doing a Google training in Newcastle that's uh, live from Google Head Office. We'll be streaming it, and you only get access to that content if you uh, associate yourselves with Google Partner, like our company is. Um, I'm speaking at WordCamp, which is a WordPress uh, event on the seventh. May, 300 people apparently. Um, 12th of May on the Sunshine Coast, maybe Brisbane people even want to come. Uh, we're running a movie called Code, Debugging the Gender Gap, and I've actually had to crowdsource that movie. We got our minimum vote, and it's going ahead. It's all about females and technology and uh, the history of technology and where it's going, and it's a really great piece of to get lots of you in front of. Um, and look, there's other stuff. Just go onto our website, thecreativecollective.com.au slash events pull up stuff that's coming up. And if you're interested, book. Some of it's free, some of it's very low cost, and some of it's uh, a few hundred dollars for a full day of training with us. So, so we hope you'll come and do some more study with us real soon. Um, we do offer digital marketing services. So if you need help, you've created your lovely Canva graphics and you need help getting it out there um, with SEO, pay-per-click, Facebook ads, whatever it is, we've got um, specialists in the team and would love to help you. So reach out to us via the website. Um, thanks again, Poppy, for your time. I'm going to sign off and um, I look forward to keeping in touch and do let us know as lectures roll out because I'm sure there's a lot of people who have registered for this webinar will be super keen to hear about them. She's gone. Oh, she's gone. She might want to go to lunch. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. See you online on one of these webinars again soon. Bye.